What's up everybody? Hope you're having a fantastic day today. Uh, we're back on it today working on the sled. So with getting this ready for the season, going through kind of hopefully everything that I can so I'm not stranded out there on the hill. So we're going to go ahead and get a little more technical this time. Nope, not changing cooling and fluids and stuff. We're actually going to be cleaning valves on this thing. So that involves taking off a whole bunch of parts on the on the sled and getting in right behind the exhaust so right behind the exhaust and the header so without further ado let's go ahead we're gonna get to it first things first we got to remove all of these panels the both left and right and the hood um so we'll just get to it so i'm gonna start on the left side of the sled right here and you've got three points there's one right here one right here and then this rubber band and then that will allow the whole thing to come off and then you pull it right out so i've got the dzeus delete kit so i've got bolts actually up here where you'll probably have a little quarter inch turn and this dzeus kit is for a yz 450 but all it is is just changes from a quarter turn to an actual bolt perfect place to put bolts right there that stays and then We'll go ahead, and I've got a different one so it doesn't catch on stuff. An Allen head right here. So that DZUS kit takes a 5 16 or a five, or an 8 millimeter um, to get that bolt out. So there we go. We've got both of those out. Put them up there. Make sure that one stays. And then the rubber. Pull back. Let her go. And then everything should pop out. Now we've got two pins, kind of like pins, plastic pins, holding it in. You just go ahead and give it a quick little pull, both of them, and the whole thing comes right on out. Go ahead, put that over to the side, and we will work on the other side. Now that we've got both panels off and sitting over to the side, it is time to take the hood off. Now the hood also has two, one on this side, one on the other side, and yours will probably be um, quarter turn these Zeus's. But first things first is I'm gonna go ahead and there is a very thick cable in here. Let's see if I can find it for you. So you can see that this cable right here goes up to behind the headlights and you can tell it's the headlight because you can see the bulb and you can see the plastic over here so you've got our headlight and then there's a bulb or a, not a bulb excuse me a wire coming down we'll follow that wire until you find a clip and that clip will come out it's got a little pressure point right on that side on the bottom and you push on that and then give it a pull and it will come out a lot easier to do with two hands so I might have to do it with two hands yeah let me do it with two hands so here we go we've got both of them unhooked now from each other and we can go ahead and remove this hood this hoods only connected by this and this is your control panel your headlights and all that um, stuff so that's undone go ahead and we will go ahead and remove these bolts very last piece to the puzzle is there's two little clips that sit up here holding this bit on. So we have to go ahead and remove those from each side. And now the hood is completely ready to come off. One other thing, if you're like me and you put all your bolts right here, be careful because this whole thing now is going to come off. And if you go ahead and you yard sale it and you get rid of all of it, your bolts can go everywhere. So be very careful with that. Go ahead and remove this plastic piece. Now the whole hood will come off. Well, 
there we go. We've got all our panels now sitting off to the side and we've got the sled completely open and ready to be worked on. So we'll go ahead and I'll show you what we're gonna be working on today. Standing at the front of the sled, there's your handlebars, here's your skis. Standing at the front, you see your exhaust and then right behind your exhaust, you'll go down and there's two plumes right there. There's one right here and one right here that we're gonna be working on today. So we're on the left side, on your oil side. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove this hose clamp, put it up there and remove this hose from the actual reed. Same with the other side. The other side has a hose running to it that I'm gonna go ahead and remove. So both those hoses will come off. That's our first step. So we'll grab a pair of pliers here, sneak them in, see if we can get this clamp to move up. There we go. Now that clamp is off the barb and it won't be clamping onto anything, so it can just hang out right there. We'll do the other one on the other side, but we'll go ahead and see if we can get this loose. I like to take a pair of pliers first time and just lightly grab onto it, and you can feel it kind of pop. Sometimes they get kind of stuck on and make it really, really hard to get off, but this one was actually not too bad to get off. So this next part is actually really, really important because there's four bolts holding this whole thing on. But if you see, this top bolt is only holding this black cap onto this aluminum housing. Whereas this side bolt is actually going through the aluminum housing and holding everything onto the head here. So we've got to undo these two bolts on the sides and leave the top and the bottom one for after we get it off. So we'll do all that on both of them. Go ahead and remove these. Now it looks like it might have some trouble with this outside bolt getting it off because of this exhaust right here. So we might have to take this exhaust and pull it back a little bit. I've got a 10 mil on an extension and we'll go ahead and we'll just go ahead and break these all loose. So we've got the two long side bolts out of this one over here. So we'll go ahead and we'll just pop it back and pull it on out. Maybe not. Well, it's looking like we're gonna have to A, remove our exhaust and B, at least loosen up our steering column. So we'll go ahead and we'll remove this exhaust here and it starts off with these two connections need to come apart. There's one right here, one right here. Those come apart, and then it comes apart here at the main loom, and that's for your O2 sensor. And then we'll go ahead and we'll remove all of our springs from this side and the springs from before our can, and that should allow us to pull the whole thing out. Now that we've got our O2 sensor disconnected the two plugs you can't mix them up because one is one is um, one style and the other is the other style the male and female so now we'll go ahead and we'll just move on to the springs and the best way to tackle them is with a pair of needle nose pliers you just give it a good pull and it comes right out so we'll go ahead and we'll put those all to the side and do all three of these there's three one on top two on the sides and then there's two bigger ones back here at the can. There's also one last spring right here underneath the exhaust, right underneath your O2 sensor, and that should be it. So this exhaust really doesn't like to come out without a lot of finagling. The easiest way I've found is, now that you've got all your springs off, is you go ahead and you move it towards the front. This is the front of the sled, and you guys are actually on the handlebars. so is to pull it to the front. You're gonna have to get it over the flange. There's a flange for your Y pipe coming off the head. Get it over that flange, and once you get it over there, you'd like to just pull it up, but you can't. So you gotta actually push it, turn it to the right side of the sled, or towards the bigger, your can side. Your can's sitting right over here. Oiler's over here. Turn it towards the can side to get up and over that piece that you just pop the exhaust off of and go ahead and push it back towards the engine to go ahead and rotate it a little bit more. And once you get it far enough, this piece will actually come up and you can come out with it. 
now. So again, the can is sitting in there like that. You pull it back off of the, the Y pipe, the header pipe, whatever it is. Lift it up this way, push it back towards the engine to go back towards it, and then you just wiggle it back more till this side comes over this bar right here. And then you can just lift it up this way and pull it out. It's cool. Now that thing's out, we'll go ahead and we will get back to what we were doing. Good, that frees up a whole bunch of room in this engine bay. Now we can definitely get this one out, but we're still running into our steering column right here for this one. So we'll go ahead and grab ourselves a half, half inch wrench and go ahead and remove this right here. Two bolts, one right there, and there's one on the other side, and that should give us enough room to kind of Nagle it around. Well, that was kind of a last ditch effort to try to get this thing out because I actually didn't have enough room when I even removed the steering column to get it off. This is the right side. I actually went ahead and I put our two longer bolts, put those back in the side so that I could get these shorter bolts out and actually take our cap off. So our cap came off and there's a spring that came off with it. Now, hopefully. <clears throat> we've got enough room in here to get that valve out of there still having troubles with the uh, steering but I've gone ahead and I moved the moved the skis around so now our handlebars aren't linked if we move our handlebars it moves that which actually moves our steering column up and down and then our skis don't move so our skis aren't moving, so we move our skis independently, and I moved them all the way to the oiler side. And hopefully I can pull this back to get in there to get that little guy out of there. Well, there we go. I can't believe we just got that thing out of there. Holy cow. It is dirty. Now we've got both of them out. This one came out with the actual shield on it. And a very, very important thing to denote is that the um, this little nipple goes up. And on this cap, there is a little hole that needs to go down. Definitely important that that thing goes down. So we've gone ahead and we've got our first one already kind of cleaned up. You can see the difference between the first one and then this one that we haven't quite touched. All I've done is just taken a rag to it. That's it. Just taken the rag and cleaned off all the extra. You can see that there's still some carbon buildup in there and there's still a little bit of, of oil residue on the bottom. But I'm going to use brake cleaner on this stuff to clean this off really, really good but I don't want to use brake cleaner on this, this bellows right here. So I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of Dawn dish soap to help use as a, as a degreaser. And then I'm going to go ahead and use some isopropyl alcohol on this other side down here to get all this stuff kind of off of here. Another thing that's very important is to clean this hose out because that hose or this little nipple thing goes all the way into this bottom of this bellows and it needs to be completely free and clear of stuff. So if you have it, it's definitely worth it to grab some brake cleaner and use a little straw on the end and just spray it down in there gently. I'll probably put a rag over here so it doesn't spray up on this, on this uh, bellows, but get that cleaned out really, really good and then we'll go ahead and start cleaning everything else.
got this thing pretty well cleaned up on both sides and then the shaft I was spraying some carb cleaner up inside those four there's four little holes right there spraying to clean those out and then the tops pretty clean but now I've got to work on this pillow so I've got some Dawn dish soap and some water and a sprayer and I'm just gonna go ahead and spray and clean that off I might go clean my hands up a little bit because they're kind of gross but pretty well clean there it is got it one all completely clean and we're gonna move on to this other one do the same stuff cool now we've got both of them cleaned and remember we need to leave the right one undone to put this cap on afterwards so I've gone ahead and I've put this one together, but I wanted to show you something because for me intuitively it it makes sense to have the flat side up. But if you go and you put it into the cylinder, like you're trying to put it in with the flat side, flat side is up, and you go to put it in, it fits in, but it doesn't move. It won't move back and forth if it's if it's in there. So if we go ahead and we flip it over to where this is now the dishes are up and our nipple is up, put it all in, the bellows move. So it's very important to make sure that they move. That's a good double check on yourself because with the holes up it moves, we flip it over, holes are down, it still goes in but you can't move the bellows. You see how the bellows is off? It's all the way out and it will not go in. So flip it over. Holes up, bellow moves all the way tucked into the cylinder. Very, very important note to know. And apparently I've got a little more cleaning to do on the inside of there. So we'll go ahead and get those cleaned up and then put back in. So now we got both of them back installed and remember this one has to be apart with that cap off and make sure that the spring is sitting in the right spot. Um, it's kind of easy to get the spring over you but you gotta, gotta compress the spring and put it over. There's that little, um, little bolt in there that it's gotta go around. Then definitely make sure that the little hole is on the bottom on both of them. So now that we've got those back in and all down, we'll go ahead and we'll put our steering column back together and put the actual hoses back on the valve. Got the engine all put back together. We've got our hoses back on. We put our, um, our steering back together. Now we're going to go ahead and put our exhaust back in there. Got the exhaust all back in, and now do not forget to plug your O2 sensor back in. Just go in right there, and they just need to be plugged in. And then, the only thing left is to put the body panels back on it. Once you go ahead and put your hood on, it is very, very important to not forget to plug your instrument cl cluster back in. It's a lot easier to do it with the panels off. You can, if you need to, put the driver's or the oiler side on, the left side, but it's way easier to get to that clip on the uh, right side of the sled. Now that we got all the panels back on, job done. Wasn't as bad as I was thinking it was, so that's cool. Glad that we got those clean. That'll help help with our engine performance overall. So. Thank you guys all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe. If you, this helped you out at all, please give me a big thumbs up. If you got some way that you're doing something different, please leave a comment below. Anyways, I'm going to get out of here and enjoy the rest of my day. You guys do the same. Take it easy, everyone, and peace.